Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where I'm always excited to introduce arguably the most creative Terran in the world. In the blue, it's the Admiral, Gumiho. But he doesn't have a monopoly on creativity. No, especially when this player is involved. In the red, the Protoss player, creator. Probably the most emotional player out there right now. Whether he wins or loses, whether he smashes his opponent or his headset, or maybe both. It's likely we're going to see some drama from these two. And almost as likely as me begging you to like and subscribe. Uh, Jimmy, what are we... 1,219 likes on this video, on this cast, on this early cheese. And I'll cast another... Si oh my god, that's a dark shrine. And I'll cast another series. I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you have a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get... A little bit cheesier. If you're lactose intolerant, it's time to turn off the video. Uh, maybe just close the entire computer because creator starting off with possibly the oldest but most reliable trick in the book. It's the Dark Templar Rush. Yes, yeah, he does have an expansion. He, is, he isn't just doing this off one base. It's not easy to read, especially... He, did he see the Twilight? Gumio did not see the Twilight. The Reaper Wall serving the purpose of denying the scout here more than uh, it usually does. And so Gumiho should have no warning about what's going to happen here momentarily. Uh, at least, it's very unlikely he's going to have a turret or a raven ready, especially considering... He's starting out. Yeah, he's got the medevac on the way across. And there is nothing indicating that he's going to be ready with detection. This is a straight-up DT rush. Four and a half minutes in. 420 even. And the DTs are already warping in. Now, medevac goes in towards the main. The marines may be able to take out one of the pylons, disable a gateway. There's only two of them, and one of them's on the other side of the map. This is going to start getting a little suspicious. He tries to repower with a pylon. Very optimistic there. Gumio just goes for the cyber core as the DTs are slicing through. He gets into the main, eviscerating all the marines. How many scans back at home? There's about to be one in just a couple seconds. The cyber core is going to die. All right. Well, he gets a scan. Almost gets the one in the main. The SCV citizens arrest. Sliced up. Cyber core is dead. Defensive Dark Templar. He picks up. The Cyclone still going to work at the natural. Eight SCVs so far. This DT has eight kills in and of itself. Only one DT lost. But losing half of his gateway production as well as a cyber core. Tanks on the way across. There's just no detection right now. At Creator. Well, there comes a scan. The- where is that warp- no! Oh no, it's a disaster! And the boys are coming across the- we're five and a half minutes in! A DT is- is just slicing through the entirety of Gumio's main. He's abandoned it. He's locked him in there. He's locked the DT inside the house. He's building turrets on the other side of the map. Overcharge already used. I'm not sure. He, he popped the overcharge so early on there. He has to wait out more scans. There's going to be another one, but Creator is trickling in the DTs. No, there's the scan, but he gets the turret. He's got to build another turret if he wants detection. The Raven's here. The Raven is finished. Kumiho has the makings of a, a real solid push, and now the DTs are warped in, and Creator didn't realize. There's one more pylon to back this up. Shield battery overcharge still 15 seconds out. The robo itself is destroyed. A DT at the natural. And his economy is being absolutely gutted. And more literally than I usually use that term. The DTs have taken out all but a handful of SCVs on the other side of the map. There's still 12 or so uh, right at the front here. Creator needs to put together a defense, though. There is detection. That Raven is so important right now. As otherwise, it's unreliable at best. The Immortal is waltzing forward. There should be an overcharge. But down it goes. The Cyclone with two HP. There's two shield batteries. If we're going to overcharge, now's a good time. He has it off cooldown. Creator, why aren't you overcharging? Oh, my. 
Meanwhile, the DT has forced one of the orbitals to lift off. Maybe he just wants to hold his main. This is a straight up, full on, knockdown, drag out base trade. I. Gumiho's entire base will have to be lifted. And trying to come down the ramp, the Liberator is targeted. He never got blink. The Twilight Council died. Everything Gumio has is being sent to cross. Creator still on one base. He still has all his mineral patches because this game has only been seven and a half minutes long. There is enough energy for overcharge. And that's it. Here we are. Shield battery overcharge used. That's a huge deal. I have no idea who's ahead in this fight. If he's able to get the Raven. The Raven, the detection creator, starting to hold the line. And he does it. The Dark Templar rush into a five minute, no, a four minute long base trade. And Creator takes game one in dramatic, I, I promise drama. I didn't think I'd deliver quite so quickly, but oh my, starting off with whatever that was. And I don't think it's going to get more um, sane from here. Who, I can't remember the last time I've seen a Dark Templar rush, and that's not because I didn't bring detection, but because it is possibly the least common of early Protoss cheeses, and there's a wide array of them. But we're heading into game two, creator of one to zero. Jimmy, I said one. Thank you. DTs don't count for two. Archons do. <clears throat> All right, creator. How many? He has two. Pro he, he's trying to delay an engineering bay block. Is is I imagine why that second probe is down the ramp, or at least not so much delay, but at least make sure it doesn't really get established. Engineering bay block, definitely one of those strategies that's cropped up since the newest balance patch, as uh, more of a common tactic as getting those cyclones. As we saw there, if the DTs weren't literally killing essentially the entire economy, Gumiho was getting a lot of work done. So the thing is, it was the worst case scenario. He, there were DTs at both bases and warped it at home to defend. Creator, I thought he made a mistake in not trying to hold the natural, but in holding the main just barely, but holding the main, he made the right call because Gumiho had no home to go back to. So one base is more than none. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Stargate is the choice. And that was kind of a, a crazy timing out of Gumiho, too. He went for the Medivac Marine into Cyclone Liberator. That is about as much as you can throw at him early um, and still have something resembling a follow-up. The problem for Gumiho was he had a follow-up instead of something like uh, as committed as a DT rush. Wow, Gumiho actually doing a great job of, of kiting the Adept, at least for now, because technically the Reaper has slightly more range. It's just rarely do we see someone testing the waters like that. Uh, even Clem will find it difficult if they're not something to block the Adept for a bit, like a Nexus. Looks like Widowmine on the way. Gumio has yet to expand. And, and by that, I mean on the low ground. <gasps> Do this thing. All right. The margin is quite thin. But it's much better to be too, uh, too early with the shade than too late. Because if you're too early, the Widowmine just doesn't fire. If you're too late, well, you're dead, which makes it hard to counter Widowmines. So. Gumio gets away with it. Now, we see. There are... How many Widowmines on the field? There are only two. They're both in the medevac. Creator's just gonna go. It, is he really gonna gamble on this? There could be a widow mine in that mineral line. Does he even care? Wow. He is the danger. Meanwhile, the Reaper gets it. Stop. How many times? Put me down! What? You, you ready to play nice? Okay. Well, 
I know. Oh, the window mines! Oh no! Oh, and now there's no energy! Oh, the Reaper gets out! Insult to grievous injury! Five SCVs died! Oh my god, here we go again. The Widow Mines. That he can lift one. Now this is just a power move. He fired off the mines. They're on cooldown. And then he just picked up and unburrowed and is walking home. And the Reaper! I'm back! <laughs> Kumi Ho is not letting Creator have all the fun here. Oh my god, do it again. Fancied, oh my, that's not fair. These two, the small and the large moves so far, clearly clashing dramatically. It's going to be Phoenix, and I think he's angling towards Charznots, but the Twilight just finished. Uh, siege tank slamming into the stalkers, and uh, well, there's actually not very many units. What are you gonna pick up one marine? Yes, how did that work out? Here comes the oracle. There goes the oracle. Probes pulled off the line. And seven probes down the siege tank, zoning out the rest of the units and creator. Losing a lot of economy just like that. The medevac shows up. Warping in some adept stims again, targeting the stalker as it warps in. What a horrifying experience. Is he gonna go for the tank? Gets the pod on. Another tank showing up. And Gumiho, this push is scaling very quickly. It's getting more and more difficult to see Creator being able to dislodge this. He's got no damage on the other side. How many gateways? Two gateways. That's not enough gateways. Where did the gateways go, Creator? Where has the money been spent? Hashtag gate gate. I... He has the, the phoenixes, which do not counter marines. We're about to have combat shield. No, no even... Uh, just now getting engineering base. No plus one. Oh, God. These two just go and add it. This reminds me of, like, Wings of Liberty builds. Both because of the actual builds and the early aggression here that neither player is able to really deal with efficiently. Like, DT rush and then just, like, one and a half base tank push? What is that? What year is it? What? Why are there probes in an attempt? <laughs> There will be workers on the wrong side of the map in every game this series. That is my prediction. And I'm very excited for it. Shield battery. I'm not sure. Like, creator just keeps fat finger. What? What is going on? Who's flanking who? There are phoenixes, probes, and an adept getting chased by marines. He doesn't have enough energy to lift all the marine. And now the phoenixes. Gumio still has the supply. Gumio's in a great position. The DTs would have been helpful here. I thought that was a dark shrine for a moment at the natural. <laughs> oh my. Now the Phoenix is about to repower these batteries, thankfully. But Gumi already has three bases. Like, he's sitting pretty right now. He's happy with the situation. The Phoenix is, uh, he's building another Stargate. I guess why not? Some charge lots are done. But even if he clears this army and he very Well, there's the tanks up in the air. Another one. Does he have enough energy for the third? Yeah, well, gonna gun down another Phoenix or two here. And creator with a pretty clean uh, sweep there. But uh, Gumi has three bases. He's got how many racks up? He's got all five racks that you can expect at this stage of the game. Creator is going to see the third base pretty comfortably mining. Might be able to pick off one SCV, but... Oh, how did he see those mines? Were they not burrowed? I guess so. There was no observers. They must have uh, not been burrowed. Bit of a mistake there. Creator has a lot of work to do. Uh, these phoenixes got to pull more than their weight, which they literally can't because they're bounded by energy, unfortunately. If Gumiho never builds a ghost, then maybe eventually the phoenixes can, can be enough to drag them back into this, but it's... Well... We are the medevacs. There are two medevacs on the field, two more... Ah, here we go. Scan. One one is done. The Widowmines are going to have to hit the Terran army and the Terran army only. Uh, maybe, maybe using the Phoenixes to drag them in. 
That is the only way this goes even remotely close to well. Well, it gets most of the Widow Mines. Um, but yeah, that's far too much for Reed Marauder. The Bio Balls are just tearing through everything. Shield Battery Overcharge keeps a sentry alive well past its time. Widow Mines will burrow. He tries to drag him in to marginal success. The armory is done and there's no detection, so... That should about wrap things up here. We got a Nubiho just refuses to stop by. He unburrows them. Power move again. Oh my. <laughs> oh, another hectic game here. But this time around, Gumiho turns it on him. Wow. Just going at it, these two. DT rush, early tank push, Phoenix charge lot coming out from creator. I don't know how much of that was planned and how much of that was just uh, as a reaction, but we're all tied up one to one. Jimmy, please. Gold Nora will be game number three. Mm. Great series thus far. Always love to see. I, for every 25-minute macro game. So here's the thing. Um, we're going to break the fourth wall a little bit before Gumiho finishes his own. You usually see so many of these long, drawn-out games because they're way better for viewer numbers. Every time a game ends here, especially on the YouTubes, some people... We don't, we don't care about these people. Well, I mean, we do, but some people leave. So game one is usually the most important. And if the best game of the series, or the longest one is game four, that's just not great as a, a content creator, not a Protoss creator. Um, and for every, for every five, for every game that's like the last two, like these pre 10 minute games, which is the actual average time of a game of StarCraft two is around 10 minutes in professional StarCraft 2. Doesn't really matter the matchup. TVT can go a little longer. TVZ, maybe a bit longer. But for every one of these epic back and forths, there's a game that's just someone walking over the other in 10 minutes. And by walking over, I mean get an early advantage, follow up, wrap it up around eight and a half minutes or so. When you get your two, three base timing, that happens to pros just as much as it happens. Uh, to your average relatively high-level nerd on the ladder. So even though both players are top-notch, sometimes there's that insurmountable advantage. But because we have the opportunity, and there's only... I, I showed the good games for the fans. The, which really means the greatest ones. As opposed to just the good ones, which means a series may be interspersed with some good games and then, you know, some mediocre ones. What am I getting to? The point is, you don't usually see those sorts of games because the shorter games don't even end up on the channel very often because they're usually kind of one-sided and relatively boring and a lot of people tune out after. But thank you for continuing to tune in for that rambling rant, which uh, likely has taken up over half the game at this point based on how these two have played thus far. But let's tune back in to the game itself where we see Blank on the way. As well as Hellions and Reapers? This is not TVT. Well, this is the old TVT style. The new TVT style is building Cyclones. It appears that the new TVP style is building Reaper Hellion. Which... is not well known for dealing with Blink Stalkers. But there do have to be any Stalkers on the field. And right now it's five Reapers and three Hellions against, it's going to be two Stalkers and two Adepts. The shield battery, obviously helpful here. The Reapers are heading towards the main. The Adepts will shade back. I'm pretty sure the Reapers actually beat the Stalkers, which is an incredibly odd scenario. There's a shield battery back there. That will save him. The Hellions are heading in. He's just targeting the probes. Um, Gumiho. Just, uh, the Adepts don't quite target the Hellions perfectly. He's gonna kill six probes. I was mostly joking when I said that was over half the game, but at this rate... 
Eh, seven probes. He lost three Hellions and a Reaper. You know, if he had lost the Reapers, I think that would have been rough. But the fact they still exist and he's building siege tanks at home means that he's pretty well set to deal um, with a, uh, a blank timing behind it, especially since Creator only has three gates. He just simply can't build that many Stalkers. So as long as there's uh, one, maybe two tanks, there you go, then he should be well defended to deal with any blinks into the main or pokes at the natural. And Creator just going straight to Robo Bay and Forge. So we will even out. We will, for the first time, realistically, I think, take a third base. Gumio hasn't started his command center yet, but neither player is going to have an army really that capable of damaging the other uh, for at least the near future. There's no stim. We got plus one on the way. Gumio trickling Barrickson. Both sides getting their upgrades. So uh, we're going to fill out the tech tree. At least a little bit. And uh, move in from there. Gumio doesn't have a reactor on his starport. He's actually building liberators. He has just the raven into liberator. A bit of an odd path to get to your more conventional marine tank medevac sort of unit composition, but... Liberator heading out. And very unlikely to be spotted before it shows up. Unlikely to get too much damage done, but if you bring it in at the right time, getting half a dozen probes and dragon units out of position is certainly worth it. Hallucinated Phoenix takes a look around and a scan at the natural just to get an idea of exactly what the follow-up is. He sees the rubble, he sees the sentries, he sees the gas. Gumio has a good idea. Even if he's not 100% sure it's going to be Colossi, he, an educated guess would say so. Gumio moving now. Reaper's still alive here. Reapers have about the same DPS of a Stalker uh, against units that aren't armored. Fun fact. Uh, so not too bad at, at being on the front line. The grenades can be useful as well. Well, that Liberator came in and, and apparently gets out. The Stalkers weren't quite enough. He drags the Stalkers out of position. I was going to say Gumi a little bit off the timing, but... He does manage to siege up here. The tanks already slamming into the Colossus. Field stripped away. Gumio loves these tank pushes, and I love him for it. I don't know. I, I, there's something about siege tanks, all right? Siege tanks are the most quintessential Terran unit. All I ask is for the siege tank sounds from Brood War. I didn't even play Brood War. I only enjoyed the uh, progenitor Brood War after StarCraft II came out. But I got to say, the sounds in Brood War, especially the siege tank, but just in general. There's something so visceral about it. But the StarCraft II Siege Tank is still pretty sick. And Gumiho using it to great effect so far. Three tanks going down to two. Charge is done. Mid-battle. Very important here. And that last Siege Tank going to be taken out. The Colossi are still intact. The charge lots were cleaned up. A Raven has taken down at the tail end of the fight. And Gumiho going to be forced to retreat as those Colossi were the most important. Whoop! Hmm. Forgot about those two, but the Colossi were the most important part. Gumiho rotates around, picks up, and boosts towards the main. I'm not sure if this was spotted, but the Stalkers did pull back, realizing this was a possibility. With that many Marauders in there, though, the Stalkers have to be careful. Without Colossi, oh, the Forge! The Forge! The, the corner of the main! How many times, Protoss players, have I said... Not to do this. How many times, Creator, have you have you submitted to Angry Coach? And I told you not to put all your important tech on the edge of the main. Zero times. And that's the problem. All right, check out Angry Coach on the channel. But if I had a dollar for every time a Protoss player lost an important tech building, Zerg 2 and Terrans, but mostly Protoss, on the edge of their main in the most obvious drop location, I would have, probably over the course of the last year, a couple hundred dollars, which is a pretty significant amount of dollars. 
because it's such a regular trend. You know who's really good about their base layout overall? Showtime. Showtime is particular. well, he's called the wall. Uh, it's all about preparation and knowing where things are going to go beforehand, because you can't float your buildings. Um, knowing where the pilot, Max Pax as well, has gotten incredibly good about it. Every time I see a forge die like that, denying an upgrade, that reverberates. That's something that is going to matter as time goes on. Plus one armor might have saved that Colossus. Probably not. The Colossus uh, stepped down the, the entrance designated for Reapers because technically they can do that. He lost it. And now Gumio has a very deadly army. Considering the only splash damage is one Disruptor and Archon. And that's it. There goes the second Colossus. War Prism at the back. Disruptor gets a decent hit here. A second Disruptor comes up. Gumiho getting slammed right now. A surprising amount of damage. Then again, I guess it's just Clem who makes Disruptors look like an, a, a useless unit. But the Vikings on deck. Creator? His unit, he's trying to recharge those Ruptors, but the Medivacs are still going. And Gomiho is grinding through. He's already got a fourth base back at home. Creator just kind of trickling in the small mistakes and ending up without really anything. To, to threaten Gumiho's army. Losing his upgrades, losing Colossi over the top of the Nexus to Vikings. The Disruptors did well, but as is customary, the Disruptors only did well after the battle was already mostly lost. The best time to be using Disruptors is on offense, when your opponent is backed up against ideally their own base or something like that but they have nowhere to run or else they lose their economy. On defense, disruptors are easily dodged or at least mitigated. Um, Gumiho being very generous in offering up so many of his units to the purification novas, but the sun gods are happy and solar's on the other side of the bracket. Fusion core is on the way. Creator not deciding, uh, I'm talking like uh, Gumiho's walked across and is a hop, skip and a jump from winning the game. And honestly, right now, he has a great advantage. He's got Liberators on the way. He's got Advanced Ballistics in production. He's got a huge upgrade advantage. Okay, so yeah, essentially, that is what I'm saying. But there's still a lot of opportunity to make mistakes here. And I say that in a fun way, because it's those sort of mistakes that give us the most exciting games. Another engine... Has he been working off one NG bay this whole time? You couldn't spare 125 minerals for another engineering bay? All right, this holiday season, buy engineering base uh, for your infantry upgrades. Shouldn't it be armory, not engine? Shh. Shh. <clears throat> Scouting disruptors. A uh, ragtag band, mostly marauders, a ghost, a couple marines mixed in there. SCV, is he, was he really planning to expand to the top right corner? I think that's what that SCV was doing. So creator has caught up in supplies. Unit composition? Not as good. Uh, he, it's just Stalker Disruptor. There's mass liberate... Advanced Ballistics not quite done. He's gonna give away some of the Liberators here. Uh, I mean, he's still killing some probes. The Disruptor's out on the field. Creator trying to shark around. Caduceus Reactor queued up. The scans, he's covering here. He fires off a volley, and oh my god! Oh, <laughs> oh Gumiho! Ow. Well, another hit. And oh, the disruptor shots curved off to the side! Oh no, here we go. Hold on to whatever you want to hold on to, because things are about to get weird. Gumiho is really struggling to find an angle here. But the Disruptors are dangerous to both sides. The Liberators are covering each other's backs. Another Ruptor shot. He leans into it. Oh, my. Gooby. Oh, Gooby. No, the force field actually blocked the Disruptor. Creator is flanking from, well, every side, which is what a flank is. But another Liberator. So this Liberator should be untouchable to the Stalkers. But Gumiho is getting slammed by the Ruptors, making up for every missed Ruptor shot in every other series of this tournament, it seems. 
The Liberators, a Venn diagram of freedom here. The boys are pulled a little bit late. Another shot lands, and another one. He's backed up against the map. A pretty ideal scenario for the Disruptors. Can you get that? Get the damage done. And Gumiho has managed to grab defeat from the advanced ballistics of victory, it seems. His plus three attack on the front lines. The Marauders just obliterated by the Purification Novas. Actually, he's gonna finish plus three attack, which is kind of uh, amazing considering the Marauders are still fighting. But at point blank range, the Disruptors, it's hard to miss. And I think Creator has actually turned this around. The Dream Ruptors make all the difference. Gumiho, what a disaster of a game. <sighs> I said it would be drama, but oh, that's a rough one right there. <sighs> Gumiho had pretty much every advantage besides a reaction time quick enough to not watch his units explode in a fireball. So I think we can all empathize with Gumiho on this day. Gumiho looking incredibly human there. And sometimes humans aren't good enough to beat the fancy aliens. Creator takes a two to one advantage. I really was settling in for a Gumiho victory, but I don't like to be the one who calls GG early. And this series has proven that uh, it's nothing else if not unpredictable. Gumio has a lot of these games. Gumio is a more methodical Terran player, which is a nice way to say slower. He literally has less APM than most other pro Terrans, and he makes up for it by being one of the smartest, um, willing to use and and exploit strategies that most Terrans will discard because they aren't microing ghosts and Vikings perfectly all day. <clears throat> but that does result in that scenario where uh, the disruptors will land, the banelings will connect, and the most devastating losses and dramatic turnarounds can happen. Creator, able to use it. I mean, he stayed in the game and he benefited for it. And by slower than most pros, I mean he's like 300 to 350 APM, whereas like, Clem is 450. Which, it is still a proportionate difference, but you can definitely tell uh, when it comes to dealing with disruptors, for example. What is this? Concussive Shell Marauder. Did he see the tech lab the creator see? Well, you're not going to expect this. He's just going to walk... I'm all about that. Every game this series has been a uh, a journey in the builds. And it seems game four is no exception. There's a sentry. He's going to have... Well, the probe's coming in, but the marauders are going out. You can't explain that. All right. So, the tech lab. Now, that's a giveaway. You gotta build a shield battery yesterday now. Oh, that CV comes up. Sir, please, this is private property. A shield battery is on the way, but it's not going to be done by the time the marauders arrive. I have a concussive shell. He already used a hallucinated phoenix, unfortunately, so that means the sentry doesn't have energy for guardian shield. Marauders come up, they get a couple probe kills, and they get out. Which... You know, is fine. <laughs> Not sure where we are now. I, I mean, we're on Oceanborn, but in terms of the state of the game, we're in another very, um, unique scenario where Gumiho is perfectly fine. He's got 
I mean, having Marauders early is always nice, especially against Blink Stalkers. Creator's taking a quick third, correctly realizing, especially because of that hallucinated Phoenix, that Gumiho not going to have very much uh, coming across the map. So he slaps down a third base, and behind it, of course, a Dark Shrine. Because why not? Brings out the DTs yet again. There's a turret at the front from Gumio. He's learned his lesson. Definitely way quicker than the previous. Oh, that's Cyclone. Um, hmm. Not exactly the ideal scouting unit. It is only the cost of a stalker, but uh, still. You ideally don't throw stalkers away freely. Uh, uh, oh my god. I can't speak. This series has uh, taken my words from me. And it will take so much more before the end. Right. Blink is done, right? Yes. Okay. Breaks the knees of another stalker. Loses one. Well, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blinking rapidly. The War Prism is coming in. The Widow Mines and a Medivac. Both sides will be taking a lot of damage momentarily. Which side will weather it better? We're about to find out. Oh no, cre oh no, 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 stun probes! And nothing to kill the medevac! Oh, that's a lot of damage. The Dark Templar are coming in, but each of them more costly than the Widowmine, and less likely to kill dozens of SCVs at once. Of course, they can keep attacking. DT's in the main. War Prism needs to save the day. Doesn't save the second DT. The Widow Mines just own Creator's Main now. That's the, that. This is their house. Everyone else is just living in it. For now. Nine SCVs dead to the Dark Templar. Ten probes dead to the mines. The DT's, well, the DT's were taken out. The mines are still in the medevac, so I think Gumiho... Especially after sniping off another Dark Templar. I think Gumiho de definitely gets the decisive end of that ex exchange there. He gets an advantage in most senses. He doesn't have a third command center. So Creator can replace those probes somewhat more quickly. And generally is a, a bit more efficient in mining. So he still has an advantage there. But... God. I didn't... <laughs> uh, I laugh so I don't cry. Another mine drop loaded up. Believe this one still lurking in the corner. So the double double ready to go. Charge on the way. Creator waltzing out. There's no vision. Oh no, surprise. Oh, not one of those fun surprises either. Stalkers meet the Marauders. Lose one. Charge, not even that close to done here. Stalkers can't really fight on their own either. Meanwhile, another mind drop is coming in. Creator does react to this one, but it's a double-double into the main. And he'll settle for a stalk. Oh, the stalker is not dealing with it. Does he have an armory done? Of course he does. And there's no observer. Oh, no. A double drop is loaded up. The Widow Mines will be cleaned up, but the Stalkers are tied up right now. The Spylon, the Medivac, hey, how you guys doing? The Medivac from the Widow Mines moves along, exchanging a high five with the other Medivacs. Creator's actually supply blocked off that Spylon dying. Scans the main. Sees, you know what, actually, why not? Gets the Observer as well, just consolation prize. And Deep, oh my god. Deep powers three gates. Who does that? Which is much of the production right now. It's half of the gateway production, not the prism! No! It's a disaster! Oh, he loses a bit of it! Down goes half that, but the force fields, I, I mean, it just kind of funnel him into the robo, which is kind of important. He knocks it out before a Colossus can complete. The force fields, he's just shooting right through it, so the force fields are more of a and more emotional damage than they are physical damage here. He traps a Marauder in. Another Medivac is coming across. Back in towards the main. 
Um, it looks like he unloaded all his units before almost losing the medevac. Two forges on the way. I think he already has one, but he put it in a very droppable location. So, well, there goes the medevac. So, after all of this, after we uh, pick up the pieces, or, well, uh, there weren't many pieces left, but after we take stock of the situation, Gumiho maintains a significant supply and upgrade advantage. He killed the robotics facility, even though there's a Robo Bay done. Creator, I. <laughs> yeah, and stay out. Okay. Creator, I think. Ah! Wait. Oh, over here. Can't the widow mines? Oh my. Well, he kind of dodges it. He pops, pops right back in. The probes! And he gets the stalker. Well, this is even worse than the last game. The last game creator did end up winning, remember, but there's no eruptors. There's no sort of comeback unit here that can do nearly the sort of damage that we saw in the previous match. And the uh, Gumiho, he's already got ghosts on the field. DT's in towards the third. DTs and disruptors are the two D's of destruction. And now a disruptor's on the way, but the Widow Mines will fire again. And gets another stalker. The base itself. Oh my. They just. <laughs> Nine SCVs died. But Gumio still has his army intact. The Guardian Shield. Mm, like the the peacock feathers of the of the sentry. A widow mine drop loaded up and Gumiho Last game he backed off as the disruptors were building. And I think Ah yes, build a cannon, they said. That'll save your probes, they said. I mean kind of. Oh wait, there's a But the army comes in at the same time! The Disruptor! Okay, he just runs everything away. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Gumiho. Now there's enough Disruptors. Gumiho. Uh, things are getting more dangerous. Fires at the Widowman. Takes it out. The Disruptor count being at... Okay, you guys, you guys can go home. And, uh, take a day off. He blinks forward blindly. Sees the Marauders coming home, which is a bit conspicuous, because where did everyone else go? Um, really, Creator? Creator. Creator, come on. Uh, disruptor shots. Creator, uh, not really interpreting those three Marauders, I think. Maybe expecting the pathing to have sent them back, oddly, or something. Gumiho has 50 supply waiting to drop right here. Five full medevacs in limbo, in purgatory. So this is certainly bringing things to a middle here. As Gumiho has gone from a decisive advantage yet again to a tenuous one that is entirely dependent on dodging disruptor hits. So, the drop, though, in towards the natural. Just flying. No, he goes straight towards the natural. DT's warped in. The robotics bay is vulnerable. The army's in position. The disruptor's at point blank. He pops one, two, three. The shot hits some. Oh, I, there's still one. There's no more disruptor hits. The forges. You know what? I can't even complain about these forges. But there's not that many units left. Another army at the front. He dragged everything back. Where did you think he went, creator? He came back in. He killed the base and all the probes alongside. It looks like one of the forges died. The other one is half HP, indicating that Gumiho decided to just right click on it. And now creator still has enough army supply. There are four medevacs on the way. <laughs> is that six widow mines? No, that's all marauders. What is this Pult? Uh, that SCV? Hey. Oh, 
What a series! What a game! And he's, he's gonna load up another drop. Wait, where did that Marauder drop go? Did he just end up unloading them? Where did all this army go? I have no idea. We'll just have to figure it We'll play it by ear. It's unclear. Uh, just generally. And he's... Well, he's fighting on the other side. The Stalkers don't target the Metavacs, which means the turntables have turned yet again. And even though he maybe could have taken out the Metavacs, instead, the Marauders drop out and slaughter the Stalkers. 199 to 144 supply. Those Disruptors gotta go huge here. He's building Double Ruptor. There's a Fusion Core on the way. 30 Marauders on the field. This started with Concussive Shell Marauders. And it seems like it's gonna end with them one way or another. The Stalker count. It's 2-1 versus 3-1. This Ruptor fires a shot, gets a big hit. Another shot up to the north side. Just a dangerous force field there. More Ruptors on the way, blinks out of it. And then stand still so the Colossus... No, stop! <laughs> Meanwhile, more Ruptors. Gumio really just wants to end it, but the shot! Oh, huge hit! Another one gets the ghost! And another one bites the dust! I don't... Oh my god! Oh, every single Ruptor is finding a connection! And Gumiho, he needs something! He needs Liberators. He needs something that can avoid the Disruptors entirely. As right now, he's, he's on the spectrum between Diamond Terran and Clem. We're trending dangerously close to the first one when it comes to dodger, dodging the disruptor hits. Oh my. Oh. Creator is maxed out, but liberation is at hand. This is such a roller coaster, I'm sure for Creator, because Boomy, he knew how bad a position he was in. The supply was low, the bases were tenuous, but he does keep landing the hits. Gumio with four command centers on the way, and he's still got money in the bank. The Liberators. How many Stalkers? 26 of them. So he does have the Stalker count to potentially challenge it for now, and Advanced Ballistics is not done. Plus two ship weapons, not done. Gonna move around again. This is a much more uh, supply-intensive version of what we saw in the last game. Those rocks! Disruptor shots. The rocks have two HP. Oh, Gumi! Oh, no! No! The disruptors are everywhere! The liberators are looking the wrong way in both directions! And Gumiho outflanks himself. He walks right into both sides of the Protoss army. It's a disaster for the Admiral. He needs to chart a new course anywhere else. He, he outflanked himself. Oh, the Disruptors are finally dodged by the Metavacs. Stalkers unable to, to attack the plant. Oh my god, Stalkers flying towards the screen. We got DTs. There's like 12 Disruptors. We got nine Disruptors firing them at the Planetary. The DTs taking damage, playing Ring Around the Planetary, blasting away with the Purification Novas. Gumiho, losing a lot of SCVs here. The Disruptor count is absolutely diabolical. This is so... He knows exactly how to deal with Gumiho. Oh my god, nine Disruptors. They're all at the front. Are we base trading? Kind of. I don't... Gumiho with the Advanced Ballistics Liberators. He fires the Ruptors into the, the bunker. Creator's gonna be losing one of his bases. The DTs are attacking this base again. The Liberators are doing a huge number on the Stalkers here. Um, Gumiho, a Guardian team loves popping those Guardian shields. Better late than never. Or early, I guess. So Gumiho loses two bases. Creator, where, where, where is this army going? Oh, there's a Liberator. He just kind of drives right by. Creator now gonna be losing all his pro. DTs on the command center. 50 SCVs down in the last minute. The army supplies are still massive, and neither player can quite find a decisive move. Down goes a warp prism and the DTs, but another base is taken out. 
This is madness. No. This is Gumiho versus Creator. I expected chaos, but this exceeds it by a huge margin, by an order of magnitude. And the massive bio army, disruptor shots, broadside, the liberators, catching Creator in a great spot here. He's losing all the bio, ascending to the heavens, but Gumiho's liberators just clear the field. And as abruptly as it began, the game just ends. The Liberator count too damn high. Creator has nothing left after that fight, getting caught in the same spot. He just obliterated Gumiho. And we're going. Despite her best efforts to game number five. <sighs> Solaris. I... Hmm. Hmm. Gumio in the top right. Creator in the bottom left. No predictions. No idea. I can't tell if it's better or worse for Gumio to get out to an early advantage. Because remember, Creator, like, in both games that Gumio has won, it feels like Creator took the lead at some point. Like, the early DT rush was... Essentially, Gumio has to lose his base to win the game, it seems. Because game one, he lost his entire base. All the SCVs still mining. Sent it across the map. Wait, no, he lost game one. I don't even remember what's going on. Oh, game two was a tank push. That was just a... Yeah, never mind. I'm... I'm turned around. Gumio lost game one. Okay, never mind. We're not, we're not rewriting history. We're not even reliving it. We're moving forward. Just like this adept. Over to Scout. There's going to be a cyclone by the time he gets across the map, which means you have to be very careful. With the Adept, the timing is very thin between dying to a Cyclone and getting the Scout. If you overstay your welcome, you'll die. If you understay it, you won't see it. So. Okay, it's got to be a little suspicious. Why does he have nothing? Okay. You're going to shade away? Mm, yes, maybe. It's going to be... Nobody shaded the wrong direction. Um, well, Gumio tries to split the difference. Ends up getting... Oh, wait. No, he come... Ah! Never mind! What did we say about predictions? It's not gonna work! Not even an adept will reliably get away! <sighs> Gumiho continues while he's scouring the edges of the map. And I think we know why. This is a dark shrine timing indeed. It's game five. Creator is definitely a player who would consider doing a DT rush in games one and five. That is the most Protoss thing I have ever heard. And Creator is one of the most Protoss players to ever play. This whole series, oh my. Just like Beyun is the most Terran player. Who's the most Zerg? Not Serral. Probably Ragnarok. Well, now Shin, actually. I think takes the title as the most Zerg Zerg. And by that I mean top, top tier player, but still makes mistakes like a ladder player. Still gets locked in. Raynor is also a Zerg Zerg. Still gets locked into those same compositions and, and same cheeses and same strategies that you might use when you're frustrated on the ladder. 
and sometimes makes them work, but still. And we love them for it. It's just they do it that much better. Blink, four gate blink. Straight up four gate blink pressure for the first time, I think. Uh, every other game has been some different version. But Gumiho with a very forward tank position. Observer gets in. He's going to see no starport. This is bio tank here. So creator has to be very, very careful not to overcommit. All he has to do is survive Gumiho here. And I think he's realized that he's got another Nexus on the way. Chases down a Reaper, knocks it out. The blink is revealed, but Gumiho thinks better of moving those cyclones out. There's an observer in a great spot right now. <clears throat> but does it see the tanks or the tank in the main? Gumiho should be seeing this. There's a scan for the OBS. The tank in the main, unseaged, but still does a lot of damage. The boys will be pulled. Stim is finished. The Cyclone taking an odd angle to the back and the Blake's dog biting baits him into the tanks. Wait, we're gonna go back in? Yep, Blake's into the main. Only four, another tank. Oh, the Warp Prism! Oh, he commits, but he's too late. And then the Stalkers break right over the top. And that's too much, he's taking too much damage. The Stalkers are gonna get obliterated. Creator! Oh, that was a Blanc. Oh, he thought he had it. But the Stalkers were already too badly bruised. The tank was sieged. And now, this creates a very awkward scenario because Creator, all he has are the Stalkers. He's got this bruised prism. If he loses the prism, then Gumio can just come straight across the map. He may come across the map anyways. Creator does not have charge. He's building Immortals. Four more gates on the way. Observer's gonna spot. Are those the boys? So, attack the boys. There's a lot happening on the map here. Observer gonna spot all this. And again, the middle of the map will be home to a bunch of units with someone outflanking. Oh, the tank lives. Meanwhile, we're fighting stalkers over here. Looks like something died in the front. Three stalkers will just die to the bio. They'll picked off a lot as well. The tanks are still alive. I think every tank lived. A lot of other units died. Wait, another said, oh my God, the stalker couldn't back off. The other stalkers are blocking it in. The SCV desperately trying to repair the tank is just now upset as a single stalker picks it off. Another drop is heading out. How is every game like this? <sighs> the Spylon. He's gonna drop out. He sees it. Lumio's taking a third on location, which is quite bold. The Spylon goes down. He's just hoping he didn't react in time. <laughs> like he didn't notice. Creator gets supply blocked off his spotting pylon dying, which is a bit of an unforced error, or a lightly forced error, I guess. But definitely not something that should be happening. He's only building one pile. He's going to get supply bot again immediately. It's usually not something worth pointing out. As rarely do these players get supply blocked uh, in, in a meaningful way. Stop building robo base in the corner of your main. But creator is hard supply blocked again. He has no pylons on the way. He cannot build any more units, even probes. It's kind of a huge deal. Gumiho doesn't have that much supply in the first place, but a scan will spot a precariously placed Robo Bay. Thankfully, Gumiho, not gonna press the issue here, but every warp in you miss is another production cycle potentially missed. And that's why getting supply blocked is potentially a pretty big deal, because you don't you can't queue up warp gate unless you're like Florencio and you go back to gateways explicitly so you can queue up units, but that doesn't really solve the problem either, so. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, just building more and more spy lines. We're going to make sure he never gets a blah blocked again, which would be a, a good goal, I think. Neither player. Everybody slowed down. I think game five is really getting to him. Okay, like th I think this is a game five slowdown here. Where if it was any of the previous matches, they'd both be up each other's face. Gumio with some drops. Uh, creator just throwing charge lots at him. But because this is game five, they both are like, oh, I don't want to screw this up. It's up. And, you know, that's a that's a laudable goal. We got disruptors on the way. And it's the most even situation I think we've seen, especially at this stage. Templar Archives, double rupter. There's a Colossus. He pre-stims. Uh, force field is all there. There are ghosts in production. The Marines will get chopped up. They do stim. Oh my god, that charge left. Just charged back and forth. I bet that was that was one of the longest charges. A red day, my friends. Even the units are freaking out right now. Very dangerous armies on the field. We got the Ruptors. No Liberators here. Three Disruptors. Immortals being added in as well. Disruptor shot slingshot! <laughs> Uses the dummy lock. Another one! Oh my god, I've never seen disruptor slingshotting of this magnitude! These are trick shots right here. Because the purification movas move faster just like units. But it wasn't enough. The disruptors did not uh, cut enough into the bio ball. The force field there acts as a choke point for the zealots. Disruptor taken out by the siege tanks. There's one more on the back line. Fires the shot. Siege tanks save the day. Colossus is knocked down by the Vikings. Gumiho is starting to run him over here. Creator didn't land enough of the hits, and the siege tanks living from earlier are such a huge deal. They were able to take out the Ruptors before they got that second volley of shots. And Creator is down 40 supply. His army supply is less than half. The probes take it out. And Creator, just his army did not cut it. He got caught in a choke point. Not sure what that force field accomplishes. And the Stalkers might be able to pick off the tanks. A scan. The pylon taken out and Gumiho stimming in. And it's just... There's nothing left. Gumiho. Oh my god. So, I do want to show the very end. I did see the end of this series. But I wasn't sure if I was going to show it. I'm going to show it. Creator had quite a reaction to the end. Gumiho will take it. But, so, the title... Uh, here you go. Now, as it has been depowered, I mean, the Stalkers are trying to take out down a tank here and there, but now the Creator. robots are exposed. The bio is still standing strong. There is no shield battery now, as it has been depowered. You might have noticed a no GG. And, and if you're wondering why... Gumiho that looks to stand tall here as more and more probes fall on the side of Creator. Creator! He's pointing at his... At, 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 at something happened! Pause! What happened? Something lag. He kicked his... Lag! He All kicked right, his PC, back, either the power or the network cable. To, uh, take Creator pause, literally. He's pointing at his, at his you can see him freaking out. He literally rage quit. Now, I don't think he, he, he literally like leaned back so hard. He like unplugged the Ethernet cable. Meanwhile, Gumi, well, I love Gumiho's reaction here as well. Creator, like Gumiho's creator. like, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Oh my God, what? What, what the fuck? God, I, I got, <laughs> Right. Gumi. Lag, and then Gumi, uh, Creator, creator to, uh, take a momentary pause, guys. Everyone, take a beat. Take so Creator no decided he knew it was over. He, he's actually busy, so busy, like he he agreed and decided that was effectively GG. I mean, that, that at this moment, clearly Creator has nothing left.
and he agreed that um, he had lost the game there. So that's why there was no follow up to that. But one more time, just. But, I mean, the stalkers are trying to take out down a tank here. If you didn't there, think now the rows are exposed. The this happens when he's winning strong. too, by the way. There is no shield battery now, as it has been depowered by the last pile of falling, and it is the bio of Gumiho that looks to stand tall here as more and more pros. <laughs> and then he fall sees. On the side of I Raider. really wonder, Raider. did he's he unplug the power, or did this game just? What happened? It, it seems like he unplugged. Either way, either way. What what a conclusion, uh, to this topsy-turvy roller coaster one of the most fun series i've ever seen just unpredictable action i hope you enjoyed i certainly did uh we'll keep you guessing up until the very end congratulations gumiho but uh i hope i made your day a little bit better if you got the means of motivation be awesome check out patreon or, or youtube membership but i hear liking and subscribing is still free and uh, check out the recommended and autoplay that's been helping out a lot. YouTube has complimented me via their um, overmind statistics on, on how many people are clicking the recommended. And it's really helping out. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.